It's the Word of Life. The Word of Life with Pastor Mitzi Gibson is brought to you in part by Karis Church of Killeen with Pastors Patrick and Marlena Kitely and by Realtor Nicole Torres. Welcome to the Word of Light, once with you again, Pastor Mixi Gibson, and we de decided to inter not only to speak the word to you, but de decided to for you to understand the word inside of your heart, because we want the word of God to be in our heart all the time. That's what God wants us to keep the word, because the word is Jesus Himself, and if we keep the word in our heart, we keep in Jesus in ourselves, we no doubt. I'm going to be teaching this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit a new identity, a new identity that God has given to us. We have a new identity. And we're going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. As we're following Jesus Christ, it's no matter that for us to follow him, but are trying, trying, but we need to try harder to be with him, to be a better person, to be a better be a father, mother, everything. We need to be exactly what Jesus wants us to become. But giving Jesus the chance also to work with us. Jesus has to work with us. We cannot do it ourselves. The Spirit has to help us, and Jesus is the one, the one that directs us. So let's give a chance to Jesus to change, to change us as we read the word today. Seco Corinthians. For the love of Christ control and urges us and impulse us because we are of the opinion or conviction that one die for all and then all die. We're talking about Jesus that came to die for us. Jesus not only came to die for us, but Jesus came to help us, for us to die because in the word of God, a spiritual grow, a spiritual development. That's what God wants us to have. And he died for all, so that all of those who live with, live no longer to their own self, but to live for him who died and was raised from dead for us, to make us. And Jesus said, that is, that verse over there is only the, the only teaching that I can give you, and I, if it was that way. Because it is true, Jesus died for us. Jesus came to die for all of us, for the whole world that, that want to receive it. And a lot of people don't want to receive it, but you know, that's between God and them. But I am so glad that I receive it, and so glad that my children are receiving, because that is the point, that Jesus came to deliver us from hell. We were going straight to the pit of hell if we had not received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer than like we were living before. We have to change. Now he came to change us, to become better, to become the way God wants us to be, so we can have unity with the Father, unity with the Son, and unity with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, ourselves need to change. I know how much has changed. What I was before, I'm not even close now. I am better. I am a better person because I allow the Holy Spirit to guide me. And because Jesus can't die for me and for my, my entire family, and he who died and was raised from the dead, again, for our sake, for our sake, because he wants us to live the way he came to be for us. The consequently, from now on, we have to estimate and regard no one from what we were before. And human point of view, and the natural flesh, no. We need to believe now for Jesus and directed by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if any person is in, engrafted, if we have it engrafted, we live, Jesus lives in our heart, that being engrafted, he's in our heart, he's living inside of us. If any person is engrafted in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creation altogether. 
I am not the same woman that was many, many years ago. Many, many. And people know that. People can tell when you change. So I, I am follow the direction of the Holy Spirit that Jesus came to make me a different person, to make me a better person. The old previous moral way that I was living, the spiritual way that I was living, the conditional life that I was having, I passed away. I am a new creation, a child of God. All things have passed away. For everybody has received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Behold, now I have a fresh and new heart come in my life. Jesus lives in my heart, which is the Holy Spirit. And because I am a new creation, I'm a child of God, all things have passed away, and I am living a better life. I have changed a lot. I don't change myself. The Holy Spirit helped me to change. I couldn't do it if it wasn't because of him. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled all of us to himself. To receive us, now that Jesus died, the Father received us because we are being reconciled with God into a favor, brought us into harmony with the God, our Father, and with Jesus Christ himself, and give us the ministry, ministry of the reconciliation. We are reconciled to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, as we are reconciled with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we need to be reconciled with one another. We need to love one another. We need to respect one another. The same way we respect the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have been reconciled to be a better person. And not only a better, better person, but I bring to others to harmony with God Almighty, to talk to people that have not been born again. Not to preach them, not to do anything to force them, but to show what you are, and they could see how you have changed. And they were probably going to ask you, how? You're different. You, you're better now. And that's exactly what I need to be saying. It was God, personally, present in Christ Jesus. It was God our Father, present in Christ Jesus, when Jesus died. It is amazing. If we pay attention to the reading when we read the book of God, we learn that God the Father, with Christ Jesus, died. They died together. And if it was God personally present in Christ Jesus, reconciling us, restoring us, the world reconciling us, not only, but the whole world to favor with himself. God wants the Father wants for us to be reconciled with the whole world. In other words, He reconciled us. We have been reconciled with Him, and now we have reconciled with each other. We need to be united. We need to have a fellowship with one another, respect one another, love one another. It is not easy, but we have to try, especially in our family. That's when they in, in, start in the home, really start in the home. If it, was, if it was God recon, reconciling, present in Christ Jesus, reconciling us, to restoring us, to restore the world, to favor with himself. God reconciled the whole world, people that want to, to love him, people that want to honor him, people that want to respect him. God wants to, because we belong to him. We are made in his image and likeness. Now that we have received Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord Savior, we recognize that. But before, I didn't know if I was made in, in the goodness like of God. I didn't know that. I was living for living, the way that I was living. But he said, no, he reconciled us to become a better person, a person that is, God is proud to say, Pastor Mixi is my daughter. She has changed. She, she loved me. She obeyed me. She followed my instruction. That's what God wants to hear from us. The same thing that you expect from your children, that's the same thing that God expects from us. He's our father, he's teaching us. We are father and mother, we teach our children. It, it is, I mean, I don't even find the word to say it, but it is really, really important for us to obey the father so we can help our children to become a better person. Because I have become a better person, I can't, I know that. And people just tell me also, but I know, I know how I was before. I had more time to 
consider what I'm gonna say. I have more time to think with my children, to how to talk to them. Everything is different. So he went to reconcile for that reason, we, that we will reconcile with him. That way when we come to him, we honor and respect him, his God. We come to talk to him with respect, to let him know that we, when I come to God, I say, God, I'll come to you now because I love you very much. I want you to know that I love you. That's the first thing I want you to know. And then I talk to him in whatever I have to talk to him. But because I honor him, I honor him. I know that I'm not gonna go to hell. I'm gonna go straight to his kingdom, to his life that he had created for us in heaven. And holding against it again, not continuing to be the way we were before, not con counting up, a holding against men, the trespasses, Jesus came. Jesus came to do that in the name of Jesus. It was God personally present in Christ Jesus, reconciled and restoring the world to favor with himself. Not, con not counting, he said, not counting up, holding against men to me, the trespasses that I was living before, but canceling the way of evil while living before, that is what is important. He came to change me. Jesus died to change me because my father God don't want to receive me the way I was. I was a sinner. And now I am a new creation. Jesus came to reconcile me with God, oh Father. That's what he had done for all of us. He had canceled all the evil things that we were done before, of trespasses, but not only canceled them, but uh, commi committing us to the, the message of Jesus Christ, but a reconciliation of the restoration and to have favor with God our Father. You cannot come to the God of Father if you have not been born again first. You cannot come to God of Father now that you have been reconciled because Jesus died for you. And now you are going to honor and respect the Father the same way you respect Jesus, the same way you respect the Holy Spirit. They are three in one. Remember, three in one. The reconciliation has been restored, the restoration in favor of us. God has restored us it was because Jesus died at the cross of Calvary. So we are Christ's ambassador. God making his appeal to us that we are through us, he be able to reconcile all the people. The way that people see you behave, people know that she was different. Now she's better. And they try to see why is the different. And that's when we have the opportunity to talk to them very easily now but the way the Holy Spirit guides us in that moment. God making his appeal as that he were through us. We as Christian personnel representing him in the earth. And not only that, but his sake to lay down to us and hold what we have now and forget what we were living before. For our sake, he made Christ virtually to be, to be seen that he was no sin. Jesus took all my sin. Jesus took all the sin of those who have been born again. So Jesus became a sinner for me. So I will become a holy person. Praise God. I don't want to go back when I was before. I'll have a better life. And also he continues to say, not to, the sin is over. You are a new creation. You're free from sin, and if you commit sin, all what you have to do is because we still, you know, we still flesh. And if we say something that we need to ask to forgive us, we have the ability to do that and know that we have been forgiven again because that's what he came to teach us and to learn, for us to learn. Through Christ Jesus, we have might become and do it with, be with, be with Christ not only, the example of righteous person. We have to be an example of God, what we ought to be. We, God wants us to be what he wants us to be, so people can see the difference. 
that we are not what we were before. To be approved by God not only, but to be acceptable to God our Father in the right relationship with God our Father through Christ Jesus who died for us, so we have become reconciled with the Master. Thank you, Jesus. God will endure, endure it, and He is a God of kindness. He's a God that help us to walk in righteousness. He has done and thrown himself to die for us. Being not just now, be myself justified freely with, with the grace of God through the redemption, the redemption that we have received through Christ. Jesus died for all of us freely, therefore freely we receive the the correction that God has for us. Now we live not for ourselves, but we live to live according to God wants us to live, to be a model. We have to model the way that God wants us to live, different. Before we were nasty, ugly, whatever it was, and now we are more full of love, compassion, and talking to people. The way that and three people are one another in love and respect. In the book of Ephesians, I'm going to be reading now. Thank you, Father God. Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you, Father God. And you, he made alive. He's talking to me. And you, he made alive. He's talking to you also. When you were dead, slain by your own trespasses. I was having a lot of trespasses. All of us. No one came to God because you were holy rolling person, person, woman, so, you know, living like a saint. No, we were terrible. We all were terrible. And we say one time, we are walking habitually in the darkness. We were walking in darkness. And now that we were following the way of light that I was living before, we now know that because we have changed, we have lived according to the principle. We were following in the course, we were living in the course, following the course, and fashioning in the course of this world. And we were under the weight and tendency to this present age. We were so accustomed to live the way that we were before. Now that Jesus had died for us, we need to change. We need to change. We need to be, before we were disobedient, careless, rebellious, against one another, purpose to do everything that was wrong, not to live with God, because we were sinners. But now we have been, we have been changed for the glory of God's favor. And verse, verse 3 says, Among we as well as you, once lived and conducted yourself, I conducted myself in the passion of our flesh that was in the, in the past. Our behavior governed by the darkness and the corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulse of flesh, not living for God, but we were living just for Satan, the way that Satan was teaching us to live. You know, Anybody that had not received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I was there before. I was living the way I wanted. I was doing the way I want. And everything, it, it, I was not perverted, but I was sinner. I was sinner. And that God want now that Jesus paid the price for us to be alive, to be reconciled with him. I don't change my life for nothing. I'm glad that I'm growing, 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 growing and growing and growing more to him and to be like him. But God so rich in his mercy because his, because his mercy, listen to this, because his mercy, and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love which he has for us, that he loves us. God sent his son because even that we were sinning, <coughs> he loved us. We were sinning, but he did it. No matter if she's a, a sinner, but she's mine. She's going to be mine. My son died for her, and I'm going to make sure that she receives my son as a, as a savior. And I did. Now I am a different person. I'm not 
I mean, you can ask anybody else in the past how I was, and I can ask everybody what you was in the past. We were, we're not were a saint. We were little troublemakers. We, that's the best word I can use. Even when we were dead and slain by our own shortcoming trespasses, we was, he made us alive together in fellowship with him, a union with Christ. And we have, who have given us the very life of Christ himself. Now, I want to walk like Christ. I want to live like Christ. I want to talk like Christ. I want to do everything because I am a new creation. I am a child of God. Oh, past, pass away. I am a new person. And I want to learn every day. That's where I read the Bible. I want to learn every day how I need to live so I can teach my children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I need for them to know that life is different when we are being saved. Not the way that we were living like Satan's children, children of Satan, and now I am a child of God, in Jesus' name. I continue to say, we are in fellowship. He has given us the very lives of Christ. The life of Christ is in me, because Christ is living in my heart. The Spirit of God living in my heart. So I have the life of Christ in me. And if you God walk, the way God the Father wants me to walk, I want to walk the way Christ wants me to walk. So I can please not only Christ, but to change myself because I need to change. I still need to change more. Everybody needs to change every day. Nobody is perfect. That's the reason that God has patience with the Holy Spirit to help us how to change little by little. Because as a, the way we were, we were rebellious. We were living a life that not considered who God was or who the Holy Spirit was or who Jesus was. We know that Jesus existed, but I didn't know everything that I had learned through the Bible this, since I've been born again. I continue to say, we have now the same new life which Jesus quickened us. Jesus quickened us to a new life. For this, therefore, by his grace and his favor and mercy, which you, which I didn't know before. But now I know how to walk better, how to live better, how to express better myself, to respect one another, to love one another, be in unity. I want to be in unity because I already have it with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I want to live in unity also with the people here that surround me my children, my family, in my neighborhood, in every place I go. I want, to, I want to change so I can be an example. The little example that I can is help, is help better than nothing. And now he raised us up together. The Father also raised us together with Jesus Christ, with him, and made us to sit down together, giving us joint sitting with him. Now we're sitting with God in heavenly places. What an honor, because Jesus Christ. What an honor to be sitting with Christ in heavenly places. With the anointed one. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And not only that, Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, not only is sitting with Christ in heavenly places, but we are in Christ in heavenly places. He do that, he died for us, so we could be sitting with God, to be, you know, sons and daughters of God, living a God life, a godly life. That is what's important. He, do, he died in the cross to demonstrate us that he loves us, that he won us back. And you know what? I'm glad that I got, he got me back. I'm so happy that he lived inside of me. He wants to demonstrate us through the age to come the immeasurable love that he has for us, unlimited, surpassing riches of his free grace and unmerited favor, and his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Amen. His favor, his favor, the favor of God in us, what a blessing. What a blessing that Jesus is now living in me and he guides me every day. 
every moment. But it is a free gift. Jesus has given you a free life, a free gift. I didn't pay for that. Jesus paid for me to be, to be alive, to be a really a woman of God. The free grace that he gave to me, I want to always walk the way that I can. I had to ask the Holy Spirit sometimes, Holy Spirit, my mind is not going to the right direction. Help me, I want to walk the way God wants me to walk. I don't want to think the way that I've been thinking. You can recognize when you're doing wrong you, before you do it. And I recognize mine before I do it. And I ask him to help me because I am not an angel. I just beginning to live. I'm beginning to live in Christ. I'm beginning to live. So Father God, I thank you for what you're doing with him, Father God. I thank you so much, Father God, for you have saved us. And we want to live according to your principle. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that those who have listened to this program will understand that God needs them. If you have not been born again, you just, I'm going to pray with you a short prayer. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to receive me not only, but to forgive all my sin. I thank you that you are going to help me because now I am a new creation. I am a child of God. All things pass away. I receive Jesus in my heart, and I am very happy to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you are a child of God. You are just my, my sister or my brother, if you have confessed this prayer. Remember that Jesus wants you to confess that he's the Lord of your life. Know us. We are not ourselves. In Jesus' name, remember, I love you with all my heart, and I know God loves you more than I love you. And because he loved me, he teach me how to love. I love you even though I don't know you, and I don't know what, you have, what kind of life you have. I hope that someday in heaven we get to meet each other, or maybe before that. But I want you to know that everything that I have read here to you is the truth. We all lie to Jesus. Everything that we are is because Jesus died for you and for me. He died for us to reconcile us with the Father. And not only with the Father, with the whole world as well. Remember, because God is our Father, Jesus our Savior, the Holy Spirit our teacher, we are one together involved with him. God bless you. I love you all my heart. And remember, God loves you more than anybody. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Have a nice day.